Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin Cruz. Welcome back to Culture Code. Our guest today, I'm very excited. She is the CHRO of Exabeam, Gianna Driver. Gianna, welcome. And where are you joining us from today? Thanks, Kevin. Super excited to be here. I am joining today from the San Francisco Bay Area. Wonderful. We were talking before I hit the record button about the amazing weather you've been having out here. I've been able to enjoy a little bit of it, but um, you know, people will talk about why pay all the taxes in California, and it's the sunshine tax. It's the weather tax, right? <laughs> totally. And we do pay a lot um, in taxes, so we get a lot of sunshine, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> now, for for people who are not familiar yet with Exabeam, just mm -hmm. um, in plain language, what do you guys do? Tell us a little bit about the company. Yeah, so we're a global company. Um, we're approximately 700 uh, people big. And um, when I'm when I'm talking to my mom, the way that I explain cybersecurity to her is that we're in the business of making the world a safer place. That's right. Great. So we've got a variety of um, of tech tools that utilize AI and machine learning, and they help organizations really understand when there has been a threat, um, whether it's an internal bad actor or an external um, individual or group of folks. And our technology helps organizations quickly understand that there's been a breach, and then isolate and mitigate um, the you know the the exposure. Because if you think about it, um, every second that um, information and data is breached and exposed is liability, cost, et cetera, for organizations. So we have some really amazing products that um, that help companies keep themselves and, and their data safe. Yeah, it, incredibly um, important and unfortunately seems like a growing need. So I'm glad, uh, glad you're on the case. So we're here to talk about corporate culture, and uh, for many people, it's sort of hard to define even what that what corporate culture is, or we see good culture, but have a hard time describing it. But I'd like to challenge you, how would you describe Exabeam's culture in plain language? Yeah, so um, I, I would say we are an organization of really dedicated, hardworking, fun-loving professionals. So we pride ourselves on being inclusive and being authentic. Um, and personally speaking, I would say I find our culture very inspiring. I love the fact that when we gather together, we have very um, impassioned uh, individuals who come together and we're able to put our, our heads together and think differently and come up with new solutions that, frankly, a lot of us you know didn't see individually, but it's the collective power that's that's incredible. That's where magic happens. And I'm just so excited that that's part of our culture. Now, you mentioned you know fun and working hard, inclusivity. Um, that doesn't happen by accident. Culture, culture, great culture is is intentional. So what are some of the ways that you foster or sustain your culture? Yeah. Well, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'll answer your question, but I'm going to add on to that as well and say, it's important to note that culture is something that is very dynamic. I think of culture as this living, breathing part of an organization that's ever evolving. It's ever changing. Um, and it's, it's this beautiful thing that every person in an organization impacts, whether that's in a, a big or a small way, every single person in a company impacts its culture. Culture. And so I think it's important that we think about culture as um, an active, um, ever you know, uh, evolving part of, of who we are. So to answer your question around what are some of the specific activities and initiatives and things that we do at Exabeam to, to really um, nourish our culture. Um, so I mentioned the, the fun aspect, and I want to underscore that because I think a lot of times in organizations, there's so much focus and emphasis on production, productivity, output, ROI, and that is incredibly important. I am not minimizing that importance at all, but we are also very intentional um, about spending time and energy on the fun aspect. So examples of that are um, every month we do this thing called a mix and mingle, which is um, a, a Zoom um, you know, global gathering of individuals. We celebrate milestone moments in um, an employee's lives. We um, we give you know company updates and business updates and things like that, but it's a very fun and festive type of um, you know type of atmosphere. We answer questions, hard questions, um, you know, kind of check in questions, all of that. Um, we have these things um, across the organization that we introduced about a year and a half ago called Thank You Days. And those are days where um, the entire global company takes the day off, 
because I think it's it's all too often that during vacations, um, people take time off, have a wonderful recharge, and then they come back to work and open their inbox. And it's overwhelming the number of messages that have, that have come in. And so by the time you get to the bottom of your inbox, you're ready for another vacation because it's just been exhausting. Um, what we do is we offer these thank you days that allow everybody company-wide to take a moment to hit pause. Um, and because we're all doing it collectively, that helps us manage then when we do come back together to not have, you know, inboxes that have, that have exploded. Um, I can, I can go on and on about this, but let me just um, succinctly say, um, a couple, a couple other quick bullet points. Um, we invest a lot in our learning and our growth. We think that that feedback is a is a continual and iterative process. Um, we also um, spend time and energy investing in uh, what we call ERGs, employee resource groups. And these, uh, we have seven currently. These are employee run. Um, uh, associations or circles, if you will, that help to not only um, uh, celebrate cultural and, and life experience types of um, differences, but then also educate. So we have a, you know, a, an LGBTQ plus one, we have a Asian um, American Pacific Islander one, we've got a, again, a number of them, and those have really um, done a lot to foster a pretty strong culture amongst our, our teams and people. Let me ask um, a little off script here, but it's 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 great to hear all these initiatives. But I'm looking to put them in context. Yeah, where has Exabeam landed in terms of, you know, uh, back to work, hybrid, remote first? Mm. What kind of a what, what kind of a workplace uh, are you encouraging? Yeah, Kevin, I love the off script. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll keep them coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we are what we call a remote friendly hybrid workplace. So we do have offices um, across the world. And that said, we um, we don't require people to come into the office. We encourage it, and we try to do various activities and initiatives um, in the office so that people, when they do come together, um, have you know pointed, directed projects and things that they're doing, whether those are some of the, the um, happy hours that, that we do, or it could be offsites, um, like onsite offsites, it could be brainstorming sessions, but we try to make sure we're very um, considered with how we spend our, our gathering time. Um, and uh, that said, we do have individuals who live near an office, but for various different personal considerations, they actually don't come in um, to the, the physical office. And we've got individuals who live in places where going to an office wouldn't even be an option because they were hired as a remote employee. And so they may come into the office during um, one of those, you know, QBRs or sales kickoff events or things like that. So we're, we're hybrid and, and it works for us. We, we love it. Great. I, um, a topic I'm uh, passionate about is uh, leadership development, but especially frontline leader development. Um, Gallup research, LeadX research suggests that 70% of the variance in employee engagement is tied back to who the manager is. So even if you have an amazing CEO, mission, vision, values, all that kind of stuff, there's that old line, you join a company, you, you might leave a bad boss. So mm -hmm. what are you doing? Culture is so important. What are you doing to support and develop the frontline managers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um this is a very, very um, hot topic for us right now that we're spending a lot of energy around. So I, I love this question. Um, we've recently finished our leveling process across the company. And that's a process where we go through and we work with managers and leaders to map everyone um, by job family into um, a leveling matrix, if you will. And the next step, and this is the current step that we're in, is around building out competency-based career paths. And so that then allows us to say, if you are a, um, you know, an engineer level one, um, here are the specific expectations of your role, like competency-based skills and, and, and expectations. And here's what an engineer level two would look like or a level three or a level four. Um, so we're literally right now in the process of building that out for um, all of our job families across the global organization. End state will look like anyone in the organization will be able to go on to our um, cloud-based um, career pathing platform. We use a great tool 
people called Lattice, and they'll be able to see their specific job family um, and also you know every job family across the company that allows for um, career progression in your own role, but also um, internal mobility. Let's say I am a marketing person and I'm thinking about moving over to sales. Well, I'll be able to specifically look at the the career ladder and matrix for um, you know for the the roles I'm interested in and engage in a conversation. Um, so that's kind of a, a foundational component. On top of that, we're also spending a lot of energy in um, creating management training, leadership training um, programs. So earlier this year, we launched a pilot program for our high potential higher performers. And uh, that culminated in a really uh, like a value adding um, capstone project at the end that we're, we're still using many of those takeaways in our business today. Um, and what we're doing is we're, we're now scaling that and expanding it because it was so successful. And so that's something where in cohorts of about 15, 16 people, so relatively small, um, leaders will be able to come together and talk about real time, you know, situations that they want to, um, you know, discuss. And so we're also doing some additional, um, you know, goal setting exercises. How do you create psychological safety? Um, you know, lead with vulnerability. Those types of modules as part of this as well. And on that theme of of employee engagement as it relates to to culture. Um, like how do you how do you know that you are doing a good job? How are you capturing feedback from team members? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you know, I think there are multiple metrics and things to look at. Um, you know, a lot of organizations will say, and I don't disagree, that attrition data is something that's important. That's true. I like to say that that's a bit of um, looking in the, the rear view because attrition information has already happened. If you want to really understand sentiment and engagement as it pertains to real time today and also start to extrapolate predictive um uh, you know, curves, then I think surveys are a wonderful way to do that. So we do an annual engagement survey, which gives us a wonderful high level view of what's going well, and then also areas that we need to, to work on and do better. We couple that with then pulse surveys, which are um, not the behemoth of, of you know, all the questions that come in the, the annual survey. The pulse surveys are more curated depending on what the, you know, the annual survey showed us. These are more um, curated surveys that could be two, three, four questions, um, and, and they're very topical. It could be about benefits or pay transparency or, you know, some of the learning modules that, that we're rolling out. Additionally, um, we we have all hands meetings every month where um, you know there's a pretty robust Q and A process that happens, and we use a a tool called Slido, which is, allows us to crowdsource questions. We can upvote questions, um, and it's up to employees if they prefer to be anonymous or you know have their their name associated with their question. What's nice about that is it allows us to truly get a sense and gauge for what's on people's minds. I think a lot of times um, in you know conversations that are 700 people big, it can be intimidating and kind of scary to say, oh, I've got this question uh, and I'm not sure if anyone else um, has the same question. But with technology, we're able to really hear and listen um, to the thoughts that are on people's minds. Um, we, we do a number of in-person events as well. So kind of sit down town hall type of you know meetings and conversations. Um, sometimes those are small groups. Sometimes Sometimes those are larger groups. Um, I've just come from our EMEA uh, office in, in London, and we had a um, wonderful, robust conversation with people asking um, about the things they care about. And it was it was wonderful to, to hear these are the concerns on their minds. Um, and then on, on top of that, our HR business partners are pretty active um, in the, the groups they support. So they're kind of a you know, go-to resource for understanding what's um, what the engagement and sentiment is like. Jana, you already in this conversation have uh, talked about so many really cool, impactful programs. Whether it's the, the the you know the monthly sessions, pulse surveys, mix and mingles, um, is there is there any one in particular that you know you're most proud of, or that you you really want to spotlight the results from? You know, I would say, oh gosh, I love so many of them, Kevin. Um, you know, I, I think that our monthly mix and mingles have really done a lot to bring 
our people together because, you know, in, in all hands meetings, in fact, we had one um, earlier today, they're, they're wonderful. They tend to be um, so um, expansive in the content and the material, right? We're looking at the competitive landscape. We're looking at, here's how we're doing against our, our roadmap. Here's how we, um, you know, are, are faring in terms of our plans on the, the product side. Like it just, there's so many items and topics. What I love about these mix and mingles is that, is that these are employee focused times each month where we're talking about the employee experience. Um, yes, we are talking about things like it's performance review time or time to enter goals into the system. However, we're also spending time to build the connective tissue um, amongst ourselves. And at our core, we're humans first and employees second. And the mix and mingles really allow us space to be human with one another and be ourselves and just connect and that's fun. This is a uh, short format podcast, so we've only got a few minutes left, but I want to hit you with some uh, a couple more questions, maybe a little bit more fun. Imagine that you could send all your colleagues a book, or maybe it's uh, another piece of media, you know, it could be a podcast or a movie, something, but they would promise that they would read it or watch it. What would you maybe send them all? I might send them a truckload of books. <laughs> <laughs> You're a reader. <laughs> reader and podcast person. Yes. Uh, but if I, if I had to choose one, um, a book that I ensure every person on my team has and has read, because we usually will do workshops um, on this is dare to lead by Brene Brown. That is a powerful, powerful book that has just created such an amazing, um, sense of community. Um, it highlights the importance of vulnerable um, leaders in the workplace. And it's just, it's it's been a game changer for me and for many people I know. Brene Brown is, uh, her work is, uh, I, I mean, I read a lot, but her book, Daring Greatly, was one of the most transformative, mm -hmm. even for me personally. Like I've, I dog-eared so many pages. I underlined so many things. Like that book looks like it's been through a battle or something. It's She's got yeah. great, great work. Yes. So g given what, um, where your organization is today and the world at large and the goals ahead, um, if you had a magic wand and you could wave it and suddenly all your colleagues got a little better at one particular skill or behavior, what, what might that be? What would you, how would you cast your spell? Yeah. You know, there's this quote that says, um, the fear of failure has killed more dreams than failure ever will. And there's a similar quote that says something along the lines of what would you do if you knew that failure wasn't an option, right? So if you, if you could certainly succeed. So the, the wish that I would um, cast in my, in my wonderful spell um, on folks would be to um, work without fear of making mistakes, dream and dream big. Um, yes, that does mean that failure and mistake making will happen and that's okay. And not only is it okay, it's necessary to being successful. Mm. My last book was uh, was on goal setting. And that's one of the secrets. There was a chapter, um, I think I called it goal big or go home. <laughs> um, just that. because most of us really, um, it's it's the, the problem I have with smart goals is the achievable, the A. Like most people set their goals far too small mm -hmm. and it's really leaning into it and uh, crazy things can happen if you do things that um, you assume you will not fail. I love that. Yes. So final question, um, what's exciting you the most about uh, about the company right now? Mm, I'm going to take that question two ways, Kevin. So um, the first way I'll, I'll speak um, on uh, the product side. So we've got some really exciting new releases and, and product launches that our teams have been working really, really hard on. Um, in fact, in September, we have an event that we call Spotlight that we're going to um, go live with and, and share uh, in a more public fashion some of the um, innovative threat detection incident response cybersecurity stuff that, um, that I think is just really, really exciting. Um, but uh, a thing outside of that that makes me really excited um, um, about the company is 
um, our employee resource groups. So all of our, our seven, soon to be eight, by the way, we have a new parents one that is in formation right now. Um, all of them are, are coming together in October for Global um, Diversity Awareness Month. And we have a number of really innovative, um, educational, celebratory programs that the ERGs are sponsoring and putting on in a, in a cross-functional way. And I'm just, I'm so excited about bringing that to Exabeam and just the, the enrichment and engagement that that's going to bring at the at the company. So super, super stoked. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. Uh, Gianna, thanks so much for um, spending so much time with us, sharing what's what's going on, building great culture. You're going to inspire a lot of peers with with some of these things. They're going to steal your your best programs, <laughs> which I know you have no That's problem with. <laughs> <laughs> we all have to help each other, right? Yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so thank you so much for the time today and, and best of continued luck. Thanks so much, Kevin. My pleasure.